It's snowing in Montreal. For some people, they're really happy. Others, not at all. <laughs> but as I say, we weather the weather. That's what we do here in Montreal. How's it by everybody else? How is it by everybody else? Okay. Welcome to Tanya today. Rabbi Ronnie Fine coming to you from Chabad Zich and Kadesh, Montreal, Canada, where it's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you the Tanya on this snowy day. Michael, shalom to you in Germany. Uh, Liba ah. and Davida are with us in New York. Good morning. We have Joseph in New Jersey. Boker Tov, Mark, bright and early. I don't know if it's bright yet in Santa Rosa, California, but it's definitely early. Diane in Arizona, likewise, is pretty early. North Carolina brings us John every day. And um, we have, likewise, Denise in New Jersey and Simcha in Florida. Daily learners. Natine in Canada. Julia also in Pennsylvania. You got snow yesterday. All right. An inch. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's, we're going to get, well, we'll get a little more than that. I don't know how it's going to, uh, it's not going to stick. Um, who else is joining us? Terrence in Melbourne, Australia, where there it's um, spring coming into summer. Uh, Johanan in California, welcome. Daphne in South Carolina, Clem in Brisbane also. It's late over there, but uh, summer's coming there. Beautiful. Clubhouses, we have Bacha, Luz, and we have Marcy, Celeste, we have Norm, we have Chloe, we have Rod. Okay, beautiful. All right, who else is joining us today? Denise is in Kansas City. Before she was in Israel, now in Kansas. Welcome. And we have on Instagram, we have Akoy in Peru. We have Shmuli, Hanan. We have Nancy, Yentatela Benta. Beautiful. Okay, folks. We conclude today the 29th letter coming full circle. At the beginning of this letter, we quoted from King Solomon. We quoted from King Solomon a verse that a woman of valor is the crown of her husband. What that means, we'll get to shortly. But first, uh, rather, we also asked at the beginning of this letter, and we'll deal with that now, the unique nature of Jewish law, halacha as it's called, that it is specific, as we said, that gives you if you study it daily, even if it's just one chapter, we have it in the morning prayers, the morning blessings, a chapter of Mishnah, that when you learn Jewish law, it will give you a place in the world to come. So we had to understand the world to come. We explained all of that. But why specifically Jewish law? 
How about mystical teachings? How about uh, learning, as we just did, Chumash with Rashi? So what is it about uh, Jewish law specifically? Further questions that we had. Yeah, uh, I mean, that was the, the, the basic question that led to the discussion. So the supernal will of God is expressed in 613 biblical commandments, seven rabbinic commandments, right? Let's stick with the 613 right now. They're written in the Torah. However, they're hidden there. They're covered over. They're concealed. Where does it become manifest? In the oral Torah. So, for example, tefillin, putting on phylacteries. So it says in the Torah, meaning you shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be for frontlets between your eyes. Now, this is an obscure uh, statement. It does not explain what it means to bind, nor does it, what's frontlets, and what does it mean between your eyes and on your hand? You know, that could mean a lot of different things. Well, we have a very specific understanding of that, not in the written word, but in the oral Torah that one needs to bind a single box on the hand. Actually, more specifically, on the muscle here. And four boxes on the head that contain specific um, scriptural passages. Furthermore, it says the boxes themselves have to be prepared from leather. They necessarily have to be a square and they have to be tied with leather straps that must be black. There are other detailed rulings, a lot of them, that concern tefillin. All of them are not found in the written word. Some of them are alluded to in the written word, and many of them are not. But they're all found in the oral Torah. Oral Torah now, we mean, you know, Finally, the Oral Torah is written down in the Mishnah and then the, in the Gemara and all of the rest of the oral tradition that has been, you know, written down and passed down from generation to generation. But initially, it, we call it Oral Torah because initially it was oral, as it was given to Moses at Mount Sinai. He was given the written word and he was given the oral understanding of that word. Furthermore, it says, on your hand. Well... On your hand, does it mean the palm of your hand? Does it mean on your arm? What does it mean? Between your eyes. Does it mean here between your eyes or up here between your eyes? Right? Likewise, another example that gives of how obscure the teachings are in the written word is the prohibition in respect to Shabbos. It says uh, very clear, do not do any work. But it doesn't specify what constitutes work. We don't know what that means from the written word. The only place that we know is from the oral Torah. Now, it extracts some of the nuanced meaning, um, right? So work, for example, you could carry, biblically at least, a heavy beam of, you know, heavy stones or a heavy beam in your home, back and forth, back and forth, and you did not transgress the prohibition of the Torah. Yet, if you took a, you know, a feather and walked out with it from the private to the public domain, you have transgressed. Where does this all come from? The oral Torah. That's where it comes from. It doesn't come from the written word. Again, some of it is alluded to, some of it isn't. But even if it's only alluded to, it's obscure there. This is why in Mishle, Proverbs from King Solomon, he refers to the oral Torah as Altitesh that you should not cast off the teaching of your mother. And as the Zohar explains, so we're saying that the oral tradition is like the mother, 
Why is it like the mother? Because metaphorically speaking, that the organs of a child are in this uh, are are in the sperm of the father, but in a non-manifest way, obscured. It's it's there latent, but it's not revealed. It's only when the sperm is now fertilizes the egg, of course, that the mother brings it from a state of concealment to manifestation and gives birth to a complete child with 248 organs and 365 sinews. That's why a woman, the mother, has superior bina granted to her because bina is the power to take from chachma and to reveal it and to manifest it. And this is exactly what we have. That's the metaphor, right? That's exactly what we have. 248 positive commandments in the Torah and 365 prohibitions that obscure that come from obscurity into manifestation in the oral Torah. And with that, we can understand the beginning of the verse that King Solomon says in Proverbs and Mishle, that he says uh, <clears throat> that Shema B'ni Musar Avicha, heed my son the admonitions of your father. And that refers or alludes to, metaphorically, father to the written word. Right? Because the father has more chachma. And, and the written word of Torah comes from divine chachma. So let's review this again. Make sure we have a clarity here. Father is the seed, that's chachma. Chachma is the flash of it, you know, in, of, in, of ingenuity, right? That has the whole idea, but in an obscured manner. Bina elongates it, brings it into full development. And that's the mother, that's the oral Torah. So the woman is the oral Torah. The man is the written word. That's the metaphor. Ah, what it is now we can understand the meaning that we brought at the very beginning of today's class we mentioned and in the beginning of this letter that a woman of valor, she is the crown of her husband. A woman meaning the oral Torah Right, the development of the word of God. That's a woman of valor, right? So the woman, well, what's a woman of valor then? Well, a woman of valor, she's the one who gives birth. She gives birth to many legions in the metaphor we're talking about over here, right? She gives birth to many legions. What does that mean? Meaning many worlds. As the verse says, don't say, don't read. Um, maidens, but read worlds. That is a an illusion that the woman of valor, the maiden, meaning the feminine quality, which is the oral Torah, gives birth gives birth to many laws, many te- many laws. And this is what why halacha, the law, right, the, which is a manifestation of, which is the oral Torah, is greater, right, is an expression of the supernal will of God, which is then greater than the written word, which is divine wisdom. The divine wisdom, chachma, Torah comes from chachma, but it is, I guess, chachma, the seed that is obscured, the written word. But Jewish law that takes the seed and develops it, meaning develops it, reveals it, it is the crown. And that's what it means, a woman of valor is the crown of her husband. Because a woman of valor, the the oral Torah, uh, valor meaning because she gives birth to many legions, meaning to many laws, meaning to, to the revelation of the of the law of whether it's Tillin or Shabbos or whatever it is that's in the Torah. And the halacha, therefore, is referred to as crown because the crown of Torah reveal is the divine will, 
the crown is beyond the the head. The head is chachma, right? That's where the written word comes from. But that written word is concealed. It is revealed by the divine will, as it represents the crown, by the woman, meaning the oral Torah that reveals it. That's why it says specifically, whoever studies halacha, Jewish law, is assured and a share in the world to come, because they invest their nefesh ruach and neshama in the supernal will of God, and uh, as we stated above, that the garments of the soul in the world to come are the mitzvahs that embody the supernal will, which is clarified and delineated by halachas. So we have both the study and then the fulfillment of the study, because we study the oral Torah, the halacha, which is the supernal will, the crown of, of, of God, as it were, and therefore it clarifies, delineates the law, that therefore when we observe the law, meaning do the, right, the, the tefillin, in this case, right, not just study it, but do it, or Shabbos and the like, what do we do? We create, as we mentioned, a light of God that is a garment that garbs us, that in Gan Eden, we have the pleasure thereof, not because we've connected to the will over here, that we connect then to the pleasure of, uh, of, of the divine, that the soul will gain that um, um, glimmer of the light of God in Gan Eden, that it will uh, be able to appreciate understand and have pleasure of and with that we conclude the 29th letter really powerful amazing beautiful stuff very profound and powerful so i'm not going to repeat it all but just uh, you know how everything is so precise a woman of valor so a woman is a metaphor valor is a metaphor <laughs> crown is a metaphor husband's a metaphor <laughs> everything's a metaphor for a divine connection because everything is created by God so everything that has a godly message and how beautiful it is over here to see the precision of the godly message as Torah is taught to us, the Alter Rebbe teaches to us. That's like, that's such a wow. And we get that every day. The, the Shaina Hazov, his golden tongue of the Alter Rebbe, how he takes the teachings of the sages, it sounds sometimes cutesy, sometimes, uh, what's that exactly mean? <laughs> And brings it together in such a nuanced, deep, and powerful way that is um, you know, awe-inspiring for me, and I'm sure for all of us. Okay, we're going to get to some questions over here. Alan, give me a few moments so I can get the questions before. Two question marks before you ask a question. Vida. It might be off topic, but I was wondering if the black and white letters of the Torah and its hidden messages have a relation to the hidden meanings of the oral Torah. Absolutely. <clears throat> yes. There are many different ways <clears throat> to expound the Torah. Right? Many different dimensions. Here we were speaking about halacha, Jewish law, and being the crown, revealing the divine will. The expression of the divine will, right? That's what that's that was here. What we there's different dimensions of the divine wisdom that needs to be further unpacked. Again, the written word, um, and there can there can be the the alluded meaning, the homiletic meaning, the mystical, cabalistic meaning, and of course, Chassidus is. The most um, all-encompassing of them all, as it's the core essence.
Alan, please share with us. I, I, I'm sorry I missed the early part of this. Um, so uh, being the replays were on, I'm definitely going to revisit it. Um, but in terms of Asia Skyler, women of valor crowns her husband. You know, there, I, the difficulty that I find is that, which I, which not I'm, I'm, I'm hearing from you, but I'm hearing from lots of Hasidus and lots of Torah in terms of the written Torah associated with the male and the oral Torah associated with the female. I think that the written Torah is clearly also associated with the female, and I'll show you how. If you take a look at the very beginning of Bereshit, you're, the first letter is a bet, mm -hmm. which basically is the, which is a womb. You know, and Bereshit bara, the bara, the second word basically is an offspring coming out of the womb. You have a crown on top of the bet, which is the crown we've been talking about. You know, so, so the, is that even in the written Torah, even in the very beginning of the Torah, there's so much very, very strong female imagery. Um, and that, the bet is also Bina. And, and, you know, when you say that Chachma is male and Bina is female, you know, Chachma makes no sense at all until it meets Bina, uh, understanding. You know, so, you know, um, my, my, sense, my sense here is that, it, it, you know, to separate them as male and female is kind of, is inaccurate, you know. Um, and, and, and my sense also in terms of the written Torah, it has so much female imagery just from the very, very beginning. From a mother giving birth to a child, from from bet being a womb, from bara being an offspring, coming out of Bereshit, because it's the same letters as the first three letters, as the same DNA, if you will. You know, so I don't know. It's just like I I guess I feel kind of a reaction to the separation of um, written Torah associated with a male and I mean uh, and an oral Torah associated with a female. I'll rest there. So, um, firstly, this is the way it is, and um, to appreciate distinction, if we don't appreciate distinctions and everything becomes a cholent, uh, you know, and you, you know, there, there, there is an idea of um, you know the, uh, there is an idea of you know Torah itself is a feminine word so it doesn't mean that there isn't a feminine quality um, in well let, 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 let's put it let's back up for a moment and a, and a man, let's, right, we're talking metaphorically, let's not talk metaphorically, let's talk about a man versus a woman. Well, a man is a man, and a woman's a woman, yet a man has female qualities too, because a man has Bina, right? Um, a man um, has, you know, uh, like biologically also has, um, you know, what's it called? Uh, yeah, I, so I you know, so let, let yeah, me finish. Yeah, let me finish. Let me finish, Alan. Let me finish. Yeah. Um, uh, so, biologically, a man has some the uh, biological parts of a woman, and a woman as of man. So yes, in the written Torah, there's also a, a feminine component, and that's true. What you're saying. Um, so there is that, but the question becomes what's more front and center, what's more back burner, shall we say, for lack of a better term. So when we speak about the, the written Torah in a general sense, it's going to be male quality, right? Does that mean, oh, it only belongs to the men? No, obviously not. That's not what it means. Actually, if anything, it's the opposite. <laughs> Um, and that the, the woman is the feminine quality. The feminine quality is the oral Torah. That's going to be as a general principle. 
that that doesn't mean that there isn't an overlap and there is aspects of the written word that is uh, feminine and aspects of the oral tradition that is masculine. However, that, that that's true and it's true what you said, but um, n to not appreciate what we learned over here and to understand the learning over here, and that's perhaps is a good idea that you go back on it, um, is a, would be a very um, uh, a huge loss to not uh, appreciate the, the nuanced teaching over here and how pr precise, you know, they, King Solomon said something, right? He said, a woman of valor is the crown of her husband. Now there was on a, there's on a literal sense on how that's to be understood. There's an alluded sense, there's a hinted, there's a mystical and, uh, and so on and so forth, right? So it's meant to be understood on so many levels. And here we have uh, teachings that is understood on such a um, profound manner that I think um, it behooves us to appreciate what, we, what we've learned. It doesn't take away from the point that you made that, you know, there is also, but, you know, it, that doesn't take any truth away. And on the contrary, it actually strengthened it by what I just said, right? Um, yeah, I'm not, I, I'm not trying to take any truth away from it. I'm, well, I'm, no, I'm you did make it. a statement. You did make a statement. I, I'm sorry. You did make a statement. Oh, it doesn't, like, it doesn't resonate. You didn't say the word resonate, but it was, that was the kind of maybe I misunderstood what you said but it almost it sounded like you know I don't know like you know <laughs> so yeah. no, I'm not I'm not I'm not actually disagreeing with you I I didn't you know so, uh, right I understand that I I just was yes I'm not disagreeing with you I, I what I was hearing though was hard distinctions and between I, both of them well and, I mean this was it was a hard distinction though Rabbi, let me just go ahead let me just finish Go ahead. Okay. What I was hearing about hard distinctions and what I was trying to indicate is that there's there's um, there's uh, it's not you know there there's other ways of looking at it that that uh, can show that there's there's definitely feminine qualities to to uh, to the written Torah that are, are that seem pretty obvious to me and. I just wanted to well, make that really clear. I, I know, but, 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 but again, the distinction. I, 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 I want you to appreciate the distinction. The fact that you say Bereshi is base is Bina, uh, you know, that, that's, that's of a verse. That's not of the generality of the oral Torah or the written Torah. So we need to make, have clarity and make distinction and not just make it all into, oh, so obviously the written Torah is also feminine. Of course, there's a feminine aspect in it, but that's in a particular verse that you're speaking about versus the generality of what the written Torah is versus the oral Torah, right? So, I, I wanna, but um, Alan, we're going to leave that right now because I got to be fair to everybody else, and and uh, yeah. I, I've got to. I gotta listen. But I didn't. I didn't mean. I didn't mean for this to be a machlokus. No, I, I'm not taking a machlokus at all. God forbid. God. Oh, Alan, I'm not. Even if it was a machlokus, it would be l'shem shemayim. So I didn't take it uh, at all as a machlokus. I, I just wanted to be, you know. Uh, and and I and I and I agreed with what you said, right? I said, yeah. There's there's a component, just like we see in the in the human male. There's components of the female in the in the male and and vice versa, so likewise over here. So uh, we're we're in agreement, but that's on my point over here. I, I it's important when we learn something that we get the teachings itself clear, and what the emphatic notion over here is a beautiful thing, right? It I I think it's so beautiful on how the Alter Rebbe weaves over here all these ideas and brings them, you know, together. That that uh, That's the only thing that I wanted to make sure was not lost okay. on anybody else and on you. <laughs> that's all. That's all. So no, I didn't take, I didn't take it in any negative way. No, 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 no. God forbid, not, not at all. Not from, not from you for sure not. Uh, you know, I know that you're only trying to enhance and to bring more. Absolutely. But thank you, Alan. Thank you, thank you. Keep up. Um, 
I, I appreciate when you when you bring up things. It's uh, always a good uh, pill pull that it makes. So let me just. Lori is as was this taught to him by the Magid, the Al Rebbe? Was this taught to him by the Magid? That's a good question, Lori. Now, is this a teaching from the Al Rebbe, right? Um, so it doesn't say anywhere here that you know he's taking from the Magid something. He did not quote the Magid. The Magid the Mezrich was his Rebbe, right? Um, so it doesn't say here at all. Um, but that doesn't mean it wasn't, you know. So that okay. Um, Alice has a question. How can we have wisdom before Bina and Das? How can we have wisdom first without requiring understanding and knowledge? So remember that you're using the English word wisdom, and the English word wisdom means something to you that is not necessarily what Chachma means. We translate it as wisdom, but it's not an appropriate good translation. Why we use it, I don't know, because we do. Um, so wisdom means the flash of ingenuity. You can't have Bina without Chachma. Bina means the elonging, and that's what we learned over here. Taking the, the seed of an idea, a kernel, a flash of in ingenuity that comes into your brain that's chachma now you got to harness it and and develop it and bring it into a uh, full depth of breadth and length which is the letter hey as opposed to the letter yud which is chachma hey is bina something we've also learned so yeah so alice we have to be careful that when we're using the translated word yeah you're right it's kind of you know, how do you have wisdom if you don't have understanding first? You're right, 100%, because of the lack of translation of the word or how it's not translated appropriately. Okay. Okay, folks. Uh, Alan, again, thank you. I, I thank you uh, for always, uh, I, you, you always add something. And, uh, and God forbid, it was for sure no uh, at all. Um, I, I just... Again, you know, want to make sure that the 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 beauty and of the precision and and because of precision in teachings and the nuance and how uh, it is that what happens is the detail and the uh, uniqueness of the detail matters um, and 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 therefore you know uh, to, to appreciate that. Anyways, God bless you. All right, folks, you're all amazing. And thank you all for participating, whether it's participating in through asking questions or just being, um, you know, listening and, and absorbing. I appreciate you all. God bless you. Rabbi Ronnie Fine, come to Chabad Zuchin Kadesh in Montreal, Canada. It's a privilege and a pleasure to share with you the Tanya. Have an amazing day.